Tonight, we are adding one more accomplishment for Dr. Mortimer J. Adler. Although he never lived in Aspen full-time, he has one of the longest records of continuous service to the community of anyone inducted into the Aspen Hall of Fame. He has lectured and held seminars at the Aspen Institute every summer since 1950, 42 years. That says something about longevity, but more about continuity and passion. But then everyone knows about Dr. Adler's penchant for passion, about his inspiration, leadership, and major contributions in cultural activities, the criteria for induction in our Hall of Fame. He brought the great book seminars from New York to Chicago and from Chicago to Aspen. He conducted great book seminars for Aspen High School students, given sermons at a local church and discussions at St. Benedict's Monastery. He is the head of the board of editors of the Encyclopedia Britannica, and I think he knows everything in it. He is the founder and president of the Institute for Philosophical Research professor at Columbia and Chicago Universities, the author of 51 books. He was a television and radio commentator on Aspen cultural activities with Bill Moyers, and the only man awarded Aspen's most coveted citations. A day named in his honor, presentation by the mayor of Keys to the City, and of special significance, recipient of a genuine Aspen police belt buckle. Last but not least, his greatest achievement, the Syntopicon, essays on 102 great ideas, beginning with angels and ending with world. True, he once owned a house on Lower Red Mountain. Like all Aspenites, he has a marvelous sense of humor. He loves good food and movies, as all Aspen residents do. Years ago, when he was known as Hopalong Adler, he enjoyed horseback riding. All of his sons used their father's presence in Aspen as an excuse to visit the community as often as possible. And true to Aspen tradition where every waiter and waitress has at least a master's degree, Mortimer Adler, 60 years after he completed his undergraduate courses, finally was awarded diplomas from both high school and Columbia University. But only after Columbia deans changed their requirements for graduation by relaxing the requirement that Mortimer steadfastly refused to honor. He could have his sheepskin, they decided, even though he didn't know how to swim. To this day, Dr. Adler admits that he doesn't even know how to wade. However, contrary to Aspen tradition, Dr. Adler admittedly is not an athlete and has never been interested in sports. He has never skied and never wanted to. He cannot ride a bike, and he declares with considerable passion that exercise of the mind is vastly preferable to conditioning of the body. On the other hand, Dr. Adler has one overriding Aspen characteristic. Aspen is the only place in the world where he sometimes does not wear a tie. Although Dr. Adler's philosophy often is perceived as unique, it is usually based on what he sees as established truth as propounded by his heroes. Aristotle, of course, John Stuart Mill, John Locke. Dr. Adler is the one on the right. And especially the big four. Perhaps the best indication of the reason for Dr. Adler's widespread appeal is suggested in the preface of his book, Aristotle for Everyone. Subtitled, Difficult Thought Made Easy. He says, quote, When the idea for this book first occurred to me, I thought of entitling it The Children's Aristotle or Aristotle for Children. But those titles would not have accurately conveyed the audience for whom this simple, easy-to-read exposition of Aristotle's common-sense philosophy is intended. The audience, I felt, was everybody of any age, from 12 or 14 years old upward. In an age which dotes on the politically correct and the philosophically acceptable, 
It is difficult to fault a deep thinker who advocates universal acceptance of common sense, or as he puts it, uncommon common sense. Mortimer Adler also made a revelation which should endear himself to this senior audience at the Aspen Hall of Fame banquet. He said in his latest book, and I quote, No one can become a generally educated human being except in the closing, fully mature years of life, after 50 or 60 years of age. That is a goal to which all of us should aspire. Bless you, Dr. Adler. Mortimer J. Adler has done a great deal for Aspen, which he has called the Athens of America. But how does he describe his relationship with this community? Hear his words. I have lived parts of my life in New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and London. But they haven't done for me what Aspen has done. Moreover, I have written more books in Aspen, given more lectures in Aspen, conducted more seminars in Aspen, and with Bill Moyers, made more film for television in Aspen than anywhere else. Aspen is clearly my intellectual home. No matter where else I pay my taxes and hang my hat. All in all, Aspen has been not just a workplace for me. For my wife Caroline, family, and me, it has been a humanly rich and varied experience during the years of our mature lives. I would like to be known as Mortimer Adler of Aspen and the world.